Bill Common Miner Freunde, it's your good friend and neighbour the foul quince, journeying once again into that misty time when the cats were swinging, the hoot nannies were raucous and the bodacious barnies were hanging eleven off Bongaree Beach, the high summer of 28th of July 1963. In at number 10, it's another inevitable number one for Elvis Presley, You're the Devil in Disguise. This one hit the top on August 26 for a solitary week. The song's authors, Bill or Harvey Zimmerman, Bernie Baumer and Florence Kay, provided songs for 14 Elvis films, beginning with Girls, 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 and the conversation as to whether they or Sid Tepper and Roy C. Bennett were the worst songwriters to work with Elvis can engender much excited debate. At number nine, it's the Mighty Shadows with Atlantis, riding high on the craze for guitar instrumentals. In an It's a Small World moment, the Shadows' erstwhile employer, Cliff Richard, during the 1960s recorded 21 songs written by Sid Temper and Roy Bennett, including the anthemic The Young Ones. Time for number eight, and it's a former number one. Tamure by Bill Justice, theme song to the latest dance craze, shaking the floor at Chi Chi nightclubs like Pace Setters at the Bellevue Hotel or Picala Roma up on Wickham Terrace. At seven, up from eight, is the smooth crooner Al Martino, probably best known for playing Johnny Fontaine in the Godfather movies, a man who cannot be thought of without the immediate association with a certain unfortunate horse's head. I Love You Because hung around the charts for quite a while without ever ascending to any giddying heights, but it was in the midst of a good run of hits for Martino, and he himself was far from the worst of the 60s easy listeners to hit the charts. From far from the worst to close to the best, number six this week is Nat King Cole rocking the lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. While a long way from his salad days of his groundbreaking 40s and 50s R&B, it must be said there were few artists who could command an audience the way that King Cole could. It's time for Hello and Goodbye, where we check out the new blood on top and farewell the old. And the newcomers this week are You're the Devil in Disguise by Elvis, which hung around on the charts for three months, departing at 29,963 after spending a week at number one. The other debutante in the top 10 was Atlantis, up from 14, and also destined to leave the charts on 29th of September after a peak of four. Outbound from the 10 this week are Bobby Vinton's Blue on Blue, having topped out at 9, but later it came back into the top 10 and got to number 5 before giving up the ghost in the first week of September after 16 weeks. And Rob E.G.'s Jezebel, which dropped all the way from 7 to 16, then 16 to 33 the next week, and then much deserved oblivion. 11 weeks on the charts and a peak of number 3 being its legacy, which was far inferior to the legacy of Rob E. G., who under his real name of Robbie Porter, founded and wizard labels in the 1970s and gave rise to a number of great Australian pop and rock acts. The Beatles were on the charts with their first hit from Me To You, which had an interesting journey to date, 10 weeks in for a peak of 13, finally breaking the top 10 on the 18th of August. It faded off the charts by the 15th of September after 16 weeks and a solitary week in the top 10. Things were looking up for the Fabs though, because also on the 15th of September, She Loves You came in at number 37 and began its laborious climb up the charts to massive super hitdom. So, where were we? Oh yes, five, fünf, cinco, VC. It's the great Roy Orbison with another of his quasi-operatic hits, Falling. Honestly, at this point in his career, there wasn't much old Roy could miss out with here. A great performer, a true legend. At number four is Surf City by Jan and Dean, which in a month would take over at number one, but for the time being has to settle for a six spot rise from 10. The surf music mania was getting up a head full of steam. By the time this hit number one, there were eight records in the top 40 that included the word surf in their title. 
and it was one way the local acts could actually compete with foreign acts on the charts. Jan and Dean had no profound philosophy. They weren't given to such sentimental investment as Brian Wilson. But they did do party music with a witty, observant bent until Jan Berry was in a catastrophic car wreck in April 1966. Berry mounted several brave attempts at comeback until his death in 2004. Three is Jerry and the Pacemakers with How Do You Do It, which was mopping the floor with the Beatles from me to you chart-wise. Of course, the Beatles famously turned down How Do You Do It twice, firstly to be their first single in place of Love Me Do and then in place of Please Please Me. Down from three weeks at number two, this jaunty little number is a necessary stripe in the tapestry of music that makes for the soundtrack of the early 1960s. At number two is the last week's Depose number one, Leslie Gore and It's My Party, which spent four weeks atop the charts, having taken over from Tomure. Judy's Turn to Cry, the record's sequel, entered the charts this week at number 40, but it peaked out at a mere number 15. Facts are where it's at this week, so get ready for the rundown, be upstanding for the breakdown, and get hip to the trip that is Fowl's fantastic world of facts. This week's biggest riser was Elvis with You're the Devil in Disguise, which busted into the top 10 on the back of a hefty 16 place up jump. There were a few notable rises this week. Johnny Cash was up 13 with Ring of Fire, ultimately to peak at 6, and Jerry and the Pacemakers bounded up 15 spots with I Like It which made number four. The fall of this week was Scarlet O'Hara by Shadows alumni Jet Harris and Tony Meehan. It's a pretty terrific record, actually, if you haven't listened to it. I'd say it was better than the competing Shadows entry this week. Emeritus entry on the chart was the reverb and mystery drenched and extremely cool Pipeline by the Shantays. And the highest debutante this week is Pipeline's crazy cousin, Wipeout by the Safaris in at 33 and bound for a week at the top on the 8th of September before it was wiped out by the Aussie surf classic Bombora. In a new feature, let's have a look at what was number one a year ago and what will be number one in a year's time. Back on 29th of July 1962, it was Wolverton Mountain, Claude King's creaky old slice of Americana. And a year from now, it was A Hard Day's Night by the Beatles, which had a jolly long run on top before being unseated by another Beatles record, I Should Have Known Better. In the USA, Jan and Dean stood predominant with Surf City, while expat Australian Frank Ifield, he was born in England but grew up in the rural idyll of Dural, had the number one spot with I'm Confessin'. No number one album around this town this week. They didn't become a thing until 1965, of course. So that leaves it all up to the millionaire monkey playboy, Monty, to indulge us with a swinging intro. Go on, Monty, thump those tubs. Number one this week is the superstar of Japanese music, Ryo Sakamoto, with one of the biggest selling singles of all time, Sukiyaki. The song was written after the 1960 Anpo protest, which was a series of civil disturbances in Japan, where he hit upon the idea of walking with his head held back whistling so as not to be caught crying. A cunning plan indeed. And there we have it. You only get 10. I know some pale foul quince imitators may give you 12 or 15 or even 8, but they just talk more then. But 10's what we do here and 10's what we have done. Whatever number we settle on, I do so hope you enjoyed this 10 and will join me in the future in the most foreign of countries, the past. <laughs>